Good evening. It says live. It looks live. We must be live. Welcome in once again to Jatai Academy uh, or Jatai Live here on Facebook. The Academy is obviously where we live in a big way online. J A T A I dot net on the web as always. So please um, go there, subscribe to that program there. You should be already following us here uh, on the Jatai uh, Academy, Jatai International, Jatai page right here on Facebook where you've come to know and rely on us. Uh, I'm here once a month and other people are here sharing good things on a regular basis. And uh, it's all about helping you build and grow your business. So a uh, big thank you to Jatai for inviting us to take over uh, the live stream on their Facebook this evening. I'm Ivan Zoot. Most of the world knows me as uh, Clipper Guy. And we are here tonight for a program focusing on referrals, referral solicitation, asking for referrals. We're going to talk about asking. We're going to talk about referrals. We're going to talk about skills, tips, tricks, techniques, and ideas related to um, asking for referrals. As uh, we get into the program here, we're seeing the numbers tick up. We're seeing some people show up. Remember, if you're watching this live, thank you for joining us live. If you're watching this on replay, replay is always an option, and the option lives on and on on our uh, Facebook page. So welcome in tonight for those of you that are joining us. As always, we start out with $100,000 hair cutter. This is my copy of the book. You can see it's getting a little beat up. It's getting a little dog-eared. Um, we are literally, with this program, celebrating the first anniversary of the paper availability of this book. Um, late January, early February last year, bless you, was uh, the digital version, and for the ABS show, which was a couple of weeks back here in Chicago, uh, last year it was a little later, uh, like right about now-ish, maybe next week or two, um, but that was when we got our first paper copies, so I think I'm going to treat myself, uh, going to be time to chuck this one, get me a fresh, crispy copy, but we always start, because the nature of the book is one idea a day, every single day, 365 days to build and grow your business, so we start educational presentations now every day, it's a different day, let's turn to today, and see what is today, today, and there's today, uh, there's my little doodles, I do all the artwork, but April 15, which is day 106 in the year, with 259 days remaining, so if you're counting down to Christmas or anything else that has yet to happen in 2019, we've got your countdown. April 16, eat breakfast. I'm going to read it for you real quick. It's a short blurb. These are all designed to be compact and easily digestible. A little nugget of information to help you get your day off and running. Eat breakfast. Start the day off properly with a good breakfast. Coffee is not breakfast. Sit for a few minutes and really eat something. Sitting in the car at a traffic light, chewing on a donut, is not sitting down to breakfast, even though you're sitting. You can't take care of them if you don't take care of you. One of my favorite sayings or expressions when it comes to really focusing in on yourself as a service provider. We give and do and bleed for other people. We got to take care of us. You can't take care of them if you don't take care of you. Start by fueling your day properly with a good breakfast. There is a wealth of free nutritional information available at the United States Department of Agriculture website at choosemyplate.gov. While I am a certified personal trainer, my dietary habits will let you know immediately I am not a nutritionist uh, and I am limited in my scope and ability to provide good nutritional information. So a resource like choosemyplate.gov is a great place to go for very good uh, USDA information on nutrition for those of us that need a little coaching or need a little bit of help. $100,000 hair cutter online, ivanzoot.com. It's yours. Go get yourself a copy. So let's talk about asking for referrals. And I want to start out, I've got some notes. Notes are always good. I've got some notes for my conversations, but I want to start out by acknowledging asking can be hard. Many of us who come to this business, if we come from a creative perspective and our sales skills or our social interactive skills are not maybe as strong as some other folks, the ask can be hard for anything. Asking people to rebook, asking people to buy take-home hair care product, asking people to send their friends. And there it is, the solicitation of referrals. The ask is hard. I firmly believe if you want to be good at asking, you got to start asking and you got to do a lot of asking. I think one of the best places to start 
is in cosmetology and barber school. Um, they invite us, they encourage us, you know, I've never been to a cos or barber school anywhere in America that had enough heads in the clinic, enough people in the clinic, and they are always encouraging students to invite friends and family and coworkers and cousins and anybody in to get a haircut. That's an ask, and I think that is a great place to practice asking, especially when the haircut is free or nominally free. A lot of times at schools, um, they'll have windows where they'll say, yeah, just invite your friends in. Maybe we're doing men's haircuts. Invite the guys in for free. Other times, if the haircuts are discounted at the school, it's inexpensive. But um, some of that practice is about practicing the haircut. I get it. It's that technical practice, but some of that practice is about practicing the ask. So certainly it starts at school. I can remember out of school, my first job in a very expensive, exclusive, very nice full service day spa salon in the Chicago suburbs. We had model night. Tuesday night was model night and every single shampoo girl, every single assistant, every single rookie, every single trainee, and everybody who was new on the floor that wasn't up to full time five days was required to find a head to cut for model night. And you would think, 348 million people in America, you would think we were asking the impossible of people to ask them to ask somebody to come get a haircut. And it's not that there aren't enough people in Chicago. We got over 9 million in the metropolitan area. It's that asking is hard. So I want to start out this program by recognizing and accepting that asking is hard and saying that it's a skill. Uh, like any other skill, it needs to be practiced. Practice will get you better at things. Yolanda, hello. Nice to have you here. Thank you for saying hello when you jumped in and joined us. Happy to acknowledge you here. Happy to have you. Um, so yeah, like any other skill, asking needs to be practiced. Get comfortable and get busy asking. Now, to make asking easy... I'm going to start this program with the best part of the program, and that is giving you the exact wording for exactly how to ask for a referral. It's three simple sentences. You know, we did a Jatai Academy video on this. It already exists at jatai.net on the web, so you are welcome to go there and check it out there. Rebecca Harris, welcome in this evening. Um, you're welcome to watch the video there, but I'm going to have it as a part of this video here. We will talk about it. Uh, and that is the three sentences we want to master, memorize, and be able to just roll off the tongue. I think with training salon professionals at times, especially training in areas for which salon professionals may not necessarily feel as comfortable and confident, scripting is extremely valuable. Tell people exactly what to say. I don't even like to invite people any creative license to tweak the wording. Just play it exact. Here you go, three sentences. Number one, you reach out with your hand at the completion of a haircut. You look the client in the eye. Practice looking people in the eye. You know, we have a lot of folks today who are so tied to a digital device that looking somebody in the eye is not easy for them. Look them right in the eye. Extend your hand, shake their hand, and say to them, thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. That one sentence, thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. Thanking somebody for being a customer. They came in. They let you do this. Thank you. Start with a thank you. Number two, starting over from the top, three sentences. First sentence, thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. Extend a hand and shake their hand. I appreciate your business. I love that sentence. There's only four words in that sentence. I appreciate your business, but every single word is important. I, because it's personal. This is your income. This is your livelihood. This is your life. It's personal. I appreciate developing what I call an attitude of gratitude. Um, you know, recognizing that with so many people out there cutting hair, so many salons offering hair services, the idea of the fact that anyone comes to you is a little bit of a miracle. Um, and we appreciate that. I appreciate you, your business. We're going to use the word your. It means you. Speaking directly to somebody. This is about them. It was personal when it was I. It's personal when it's you. Thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. I appreciate your business. And that word, that word business is so important because... 
This is a business relationship. We're not friends. We're not buddies. You're not my family. I mean, some clients are family, but you're not my family. This is a business relationship. And first and foremost, it is about you earning a living, building a life and an income. Thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. I appreciate your business. And the third sentence from the top, here we go. Thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. I appreciate your business. If I gave you two cards, would you send me two friends? That's the ask right there. Simple sentence. If I gave you two cards, would you send me two friends? Pretty straight up. It's a very simple question and a very simple ask. I like to hold the cards out. I like to split them a little bit so they see there's two of them there. And I like to pause and wait. If I gave you two cards, would you send me two friends? And I hold the cards until they reach out and touch them. And when they touch them and when they're holding them, we're doing this. We're holding on two ends like that. And I wait until they say yes. And then I let go of the cards. I don't let go of the cards until they take control of the cards and jump into the conversation. They say, yes, I'll do that. First of all, people don't say no. They will say yes. Now, I cut hair in a little barbershop part-time when I'm not around. The barbershop was open in 1964. I'm one year older than the barbershop. We got a lot of old men coming in the barbershop who've been coming in the barbershop since 1964. I have handed two of my cards to little old men and I have said, thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. I appreciate your business. If I gave you two cards, would you send me two friends? And I have had little old men look me in the eye and say, Ivan, all my friends are dead. I smile and I say, get some younger friends. I kind of make a little joke about it because they're making a joke about it. But I ask everyone, and here's the deal. Success in referral solicitation really comes down to unfailingly asking every single customer, every single haircut, every single visit, every single time. Those three questions. Thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. Those three sentences, they're not all questions. Thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. I appreciate your business. If I gave you two cards, would you send me two friends? Every client, every time. The words don't need to be any more complicated than that. If you can commit to just that, if you can commit to just asking in that way, it will work. I mean, there's nothing more to it. It's such a simple program. We can end the video right now, say goodnight, call it a day. You are armed and dangerous in the world of referral solicitation. But I want to dig deeper. While we're on the subject of cards, let's talk about cards. If you're going to be passing cards, let's make sure that our cards, Anna Hernandez, Indianapolis, Indiana. Nice to see you here tonight. Thank you for saying hello. And uh, Brian Gum, our friend from uh, the British Barbers Association. Good to have you here as well, my friend. All right, let's talk about cards. Um, I got a little pet peeve out there with incomplete business cards. Business cards need to have the information to do business. I need your name. I need the name of your business. I need your phone number with area code. I can't under express how important that is. The city of Chicago with what we have now called overlay codes. Let me think. 312-708-630-847-773-224. How many area codes was that? I think that was six. I think there's one more, another overlay code. Uh, my cell phone's a 224 because it's an overlay number. That means you don't know where it is. It lays over all the other zones. Phone number with area code. Zip code. Five digits is enough. Zip code. I cannot express enough when you list your address. Zip code. I see people say ABC Plaza across from the hy V grocery store. Yeah. No, that's not an address. Every physical place to do business has an address. Um, you got to have your phone number with area code. I said that already. You got to have your zip code on your address. You should have an email address today. You should, 815, thank you, Rebecca. I knew there was, and that's yours, of course. I knew there was one I forgot uh, in the greater Chicago metropolitan area. So yes, um, 
You sidetracked me. You're absolutely right, but you sidetracked me. What were we talking about? We were talking about address with zip code. We're to email address. You should have an email address on there. Um, nowadays, social media handles, well, you know what? We could get a little crazy. We could have a lot of them on there. I don't know that you need all of them, especially if all of them are different. If you have a different Twitter from your Instagram and a different YouTube from your Twitter, all of a sudden you're, you're cluttering up a card with a lot of stuff. Um, I don't necessarily know you need to go that route. I'm also a big believer in this day and age. Look at my card. It is white with black lettering. It's vertical, not horizontal, white with black like that. Pretty simple and straightforward. Um, I did put something on the back related to product uh, recommendations, but clip art. If it's not your logo, the generic clip art of the little scissors, uh, the generic pictures of a haircut from the 1980s, unless your specialty is haircuts from the 1980s, don't go there. Um, clip art, no. Um, graphic images, no. Your own face headshot, no. Um, keep it really simple, really crispy, really clean and really professional. You know, business cards, you can design them yourself online. You can print them for next to nothing. They're super, super cheap. 30 some years ago when I got into business, a box of a thousand business cards was over 50 bucks. Today, you see advertisements in your uh, Facebook stream for Vista print, 500 business cards for $9.95. Um, and that's what this paper is. It's beautiful, thick, heavy paper. It's the cheapy. I spent $11 for 500 because I print it on two sides and then I get a massive discount because I'm not kidding you. I order like 10,000 at a time because I give away an enormous number of business cards. So uh, that's a little bit on business cards themselves. The next thing I want to talk about when it comes to soliciting referrals and using business cards as a tool in this way is what I call the uh, 500 business card challenge. Now, if you Google that, if you Google 500 business card challenge, it'll come up with a link on my blog post for the 500 business card challenge. I wrote about it originally a number of years back. I wrote an updated blog post related to it uh, earlier in this year or late 2018, I think, I don't remember exactly, but um, the bottom line is the 500 business card challenge is this. And it is a challenge because likely, I don't think you can do it. I'm challenging you to do it. The 500 business card challenge is the idea that I'm going to suggest that you give away 500 business cards in 30 days. Now, this does not include the cards you give away to clients when you give them two cards and you ask them to send their friends, but this is about waking up in the morning every single day counting out 17 business cards because 500 business cards in 30 days is 17 cards a day every day for 30 days counting out 17 business cards walking out the front door of the house with a pocket full of business cards and the understanding that you're not allowed to walk back into the house with any business cards in your pocket the object of the day is to transfer the business cards from your pocket to other people's hands by targeting people as you go about your life throughout your day, speaking to them. Again, it's an ask, introducing yourself, saying something to them, and handing them a card. The 500 business card challenge. My, my commitment to you is, in regards to this challenge, is if you can do it, if you can give away 500 business cards in 30 days, I promise you, the following 30 days will be the busiest 30 days you've ever had in your entire career. This just works. It's just that simple. Now, I want to offer up what I call the scaled or adapted version of the 500 business card challenge. And here's why. I'm going to go to the pad here. I'm going to get out my big fat black marker. And I'm going to talk about the fact that when we talk about the 500 business card challenge, I think there are people that get inspired. I think there are people that get enthused. I think there are people that embrace the idea of, hey, Ivan, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to show you I can do it. I'm going to give away 500 business cards in a month. So they start the next day and they get their cards and they count out 17 cards and they put them in their pocket and they walk out the front door and they go through their day. And at the end of the day, they get home 1130 at night and they reach in their pocket and they still have 15 cards. And they gave away two and they're deflated. They're disappointed. They're dejected. They feel like they failed. 
and they say, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm committed to it. I said I was going to do it. I'm going to prove Ivan wrong. I can do this. And the next day, they count out 17 cards, and they put them in their pocket, and they head out the door, and that night when they get home, they have 14. They gave away three. And then they're mad at themselves, and then they're mad at me, and then they're mad at the people they didn't give cards to, and they're mad at the people they gave cards to, and they're mad at the dog, and the whole thing's just terrible, and then they quit. Disappointed, dejected, and they quit. And they didn't quit because they didn't want to do it, and they didn't quit because they can't do it. They quit because they tried to eat the whole rhinoceros in one bite. Let's break it down. The adapted version of the 500 business card challenge is this. Month one, and it's going to be flip-floppied here because of the camera. You know, it is what it is. Month one, give away 100 cards. That comes out to be three per day, approximately. We're rounding. 100 cards, 30 days, it's 3.3, but three cards a day. Month one, three cards a day. What we're doing is we're learning how to give away cards. We're learning how to approach people. We're learning how to talk to people. We're learning how to make the cards go away. So we learn everything slow. It's how we learn hair cutting. Month two, go to 200 cards. That's going to be six cards per day. You know where this is going. Month three is 300 is nine. Month four is 400 is 12. And month five is up to 500 is going to be approximately the 16 or 17, because we did a lot of rounding in the earlier months, so there's a whole lot of half cards we're not caught up with. Remember that Richard Pryor movie with the half penny in the payroll thing? That's the effect that's happening here. But the bottom line is, over the course of five months, you will learn how to talk to people, you will learn how to give away cards, you will learn how to get comfortable doing this, and the results, my friends, will be absolutely stunning. So, what I want to talk about here is targeting. So you're going to endeavor to do this, or the whole 500 rhinoceros bite. You're going to get out there with cards. Who are you going to give them to? Let's talk about that. You're at Walmart, and you see a guy with a whacked up, jacked up fade. Don't give him a card. Don't approach him. You're not going to start a relationship with an insult. Hey, I can fix that fade, buddy. How's that going to work? Don't try that. Don't even do that. It's not going to work. If I had a bad fade, I wouldn't be at Walmart. I'd have a hat on. I'd be sitting on my couch at home waiting for my hair to grow. When you are out and about in the world, anywhere, you want to look for the best hair you can possibly see. You want to target amazing hair. You want to look for people with awesome, unbelievable hair. Think about it for a minute. Rebecca, I am at one car today. Everybody starts somewhere, my friend. That's all right. But next month, you're at two, and I'm going to hold you to it. Um... Double it up. When you're out and about, think about it. When you see somebody with awesome hair, this is somebody who is currently paying for awesome hair, buying awesome hair, appreciates awesome hair, probably buys product to keep their hair looking awesome, and guess what? If you see them out in public and you see that their hair looks awesome, so does everybody else. All their friends know they have awesome hair. All their family knows they have awesome hair. And you know they talk about it. Oh my God, honey, I love your hair. You're still going to that guy Ivan, aren't you? Yes, I am. And they just happen to have a few cards in their purse or their wallet. So target really, really awesome hair. And it's easy to target awesome hair because when you've got eight hours of cosmetology education, literally, by the end of your first day of cosmetology school, you have become a hair hunter, like a head hunter hunting hair. You're looking at everybody's hair. I always say, where do the beauty and barber professionals sit in church? They sit in the back row so they can look at hair. That's right. So you're out and about. When you spot awesome hair, I'm going to give you the sentences. Remember, thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. I appreciate your business. If I gave you two cards, would you send me two friends? I gave you the word for word. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to give you the word for word. You ready? You got a card. You're out and about in public. You see somebody. You walk up to them and you say, quote, you ready? Here you go. Listen carefully. Get your pen out. Take notes. You walk up to somebody and you say, oh my God, I love your hair. That's it. Oh my God, I love your hair. Can you say that to somebody? If you really love their hair, it's easy. 
If their hair's not that great, don't say it if you don't mean it. Keep it honest. Keep it truthful. Keep it real. Oh my God, I love your hair. My name's Ivan. I cut hair. Come see me sometime. Hand them the card, walk away. Done. Some people will think you're crazy. People think I'm crazy. I do this all the time. Oh my God, I love your hair. And you hand them a card. Some people, they'll start conversations with you right away. Oh yeah, I go to this guy, that guy, or thank you so much, I appreciate it. Not everybody knows how to handle a compliment. Some people are just going to be freaked out by you because they just don't know what to say or what to do. But target the best hair you can possibly see. That's a great way to get referrals. Also, a piece of this, and I have the note here, target retailing. And what I mean by that is... People can't do hair without hair care product, and people who buy product have better looking hair, and better looking hair gets more referrals because people know and ask. This is the connection between take home hair care product. You might think I'm busy suggesting and recommending take home hair care product. You're also building referrals. So I, I did have that note on targeting um, uh, retailing as it relates to the practice of putting out the best hair you possibly can to put the best hair that you can on the street. So out and about looking for people and get creative. Anytime you pay a check in a restaurant, two cards in the check wallet. Anytime you use a public bathroom, two cards in the frame of the mirror over the sink. There's so many creative places that you can put cards, you can leave cards, and you can have a card-related interaction with somebody who can wind up in your chair. So out and about everywhere, targeting people, asking them to come in and see you. That's that's a direct referral. You know, and, and nothing ever has and nothing ever will work better than a person-to-person -person interaction to target that referral. Now, having said that, I want to roll into the, 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 the last segment of this program here as we talk about referrals, and I want to go digital on you now. I want to talk about updated technology. This right here is old school. This is the way it's been done for a long time. Nothing ever will work better. Nothing ever will replace a business card. You know, I heard somebody at a business and sales seminar that I participated in not too terribly long ago who said, I'm not printing business cards anymore. When I meet somebody, I immediately say to them, what's your Twitter? And I go on my Twitter and I follow them and I tweet at them and then they follow me and we're connected. And I don't remember any of these people. I don't put a face and a name with a Twitter. Uh, cards, I, I still need that physical. And I still think a lot of people do. It's great to be able to dump you right into my tweet stream because I'm using Twitter to communicate. I'm all for, I love Twitter. I'm all for that electronic interaction and conversation, but... I don't think it takes the place of good old cards. That being said, let's talk about social referrals. Let's talk about using Facebook to ask for new business, using Facebook to um, tag people, um, asking other people to tag. And here's the biggie. And this is where Instagram, I think, can be very powerful as a business building tool. I want you to think about this. You've got a client in your chair. You do an amazing before and after. You, take a, you remember to take a before picture because we always forget. And you remember to take the after picture because we always forget because we're so busy with rebooking and referrals and retailing and all the other things we do in the shop and it's crazy and the next one's waiting. You remember, you get it right, you remember to take the before and you remember to take the after and you put them in a collage next to each other and you watermark it with your logo and you put it on your Instagram. Now let's talk about that for a minute. You've got an Instagram and you've got followers. And I don't care how many you have. You could be, you could have five followers. You could have 55 followers. You could have 550 followers. You could have 5,500 followers and 55,000 followers. I don't care how many you have. My point is this. Your followers know who you are. Your followers know what you do. Your followers are following you. And they're either already customers of yours or they're never going to be customers of yours because they're other beauty and barber professionals or they live in other countries 
or other parts of our country. These are your followers who already know who you are. I think the bigger opportunity here for using Instagram to generate traffic and that you can geotag with the location of your shop and you can use keywords and you can hashtag in the post. Yeah, I get all that. But I want to give you one that is just a little more powerful. And that is the before picture and the after picture and the pics collage and the collage that's got your watermark. Take them with your camera. Do that. Take, put it through your thing. Boop, 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 do your thing. And even if you can't do it in the shop at the time that the client is there, later that evening, when you've got this finished picture, don't post it to your Instagram. Text it to your client. Text it to your client and say to your client, thank you for the opportunity to cut your hair. I appreciate your business. I've sent your before and after picture would you please post it to your Instagram and tag me? That's the ask. Would you please post it to your Instagram and tag me? Now, you should be following this client on Instagram. And by the way, if you're keeping your social separated, personal social and business social, this can be your shop Instagram or a personal business one as opposed to your personal where you're posting vacation photos and pictures of your cat and things like that. Keep it on the business side of things. I personally, if I didn't use social media for business, I wouldn't have social media anymore. So there isn't that muddying it of it for me because it's all business or I wouldn't be there anyways. But Ask your clients to post this picture in their Instagram. Think about it for a minute. Your client might have five followers, might have 55 followers, might have 550 followers, might have 5,005, I, I, again, 55,000, who knows? But the chances are pretty good that all of your friend's followers are not your followers. Yeah, there's going to be some overlap if you've got some common friends or common clients and things like that. But by and large, the vast majority of your clients' followers don't know who you are, don't know what you do, they don't know where you do it, and they don't know if you're any good or not. And by being in your friend's Instagram, all of their followers, or you know, your friends, pardon me, I'm sorry, so much. By being in your client's Instagram, all of your clients' followers, Yolanda, you're very welcome. All of your clients' followers know who you are, where you are, what you do, and they just saw a picture of before and after, and they know you're damn good at it. And they know that their friend is your client. That is a recommendation. That is an endorsement. That is a referral. And I believe that is the single most powerful way you can utilize Instagram as a referral building tool by accessing the friends of your clients, the followers of your clients, the people that are paying attention to your client's feed. Now, if they tag you in it, great. If they forget to tag you in it, you go in with a comment. Hey, Jennifer, thank you so much for posting the before and after that we did today or yesterday. I appreciate your business. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for sharing this. Don't forget to send your friends. And now every one of her friends sees this. Wow. Talk about a powerful, powerful way to utilize social media as a referral tool. Now, I want to touch on, besides your social channels, I got a little note here. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, that's what we do. We share. Uh, I want to touch on Google, your Google page, your Google review page, or your Google listing, if you will. Um, Yelp, TripAdvisor. Um, can anybody think of any others out there? These sites where you are listed on the web. All of these are awesome referral channels, if you will. Make sure you look at these things. Make sure your listings are accurate. Make sure your shop's location and hours and phone number are all proper. Make sure um, if you use one of the online booking sites and you can have a link on there to immediately link to book, make sure that is happening. Um, make sure that you are reading the reviews. 
um, good or bad, make sure you are commenting on and acknowledging the reviews, good or bad. I think um, good reviews are easy. Thank you so much for your great review. We love taking care of you. We're glad you love us. That kind of stuff is easy and fun, but you're connecting, you're acknowledging, you're engaging with people, and that's what this social is supposed to be about. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, bad reviews. You're going to have them, um, whether it's something really bad that happened or somebody that's just got an axe to grind or somebody that just is having a bad day or somebody who just hates everybody and everything that they do. It doesn't matter. Acknowledge those. And I think the best way to acknowledge those is to acknowledge them and say, thank you for your comment. I'm going to connect with you offline to discuss a resolution to your problem or situation. Because I think what that does is it lets that person know, I see you, I hear you, I'm going to take care of it. But it also lets everybody else know that you saw it, you heard it, and you took care of it. I don't think you need to sort out the dirty laundry and fix the problem in a public way on that site. I don't think that's necessary at all. And I, I think it's also okay if you go on there and say, hey, Bob, Thank you for the review. I realized that this didn't go right and you weren't happy. I'm going to connect with you off of this forum to fix your problem and take care of everything. I think that's great. And I also think it's okay to go back 24 hours later and post, Hey, Bob, I'm glad we had a chance to chat. I'm glad you're happy now. Thanks for commenting. Have a great day. That lets everybody know you came back around. And by the way, people will not be like experiencing this in real time. People are going to see this. 30, 60, 90 days later, and they're going to see a bad review, an acknowledgement, and a resolution. And they're going to go, this guy's on it. This girl's on it. They're taking care of their business. They're doing what they're supposed to do. So I think that's very important. And every single thing you do socially obviously supports your presence and sends a big message about who you are uh, and what you do. And therefore, it really leads itself into referrals. So we've covered a lot of information that I very much appreciate everybody being here and tuning in. A um, couple of reminders, Nashville Fashion Focus, April 28, 29, Nashville, Tennessee. That's coming up the end of the month. And of course, we're just not too terribly far away from Premier Orlando, June uh, 2 and 3. Uh, that's another biggie coming up. Jatai will be there. They always are. Why would we not have them there? Why would we not be there? Uh, also, some monthly specials. Uh, for those of you in the world of longer hair, maybe hair color, great balayage techniques and things like that, the Jatai Teasing Pin Comb, which is a really cool, really unique comb and tool that has so many creative applications. That's on sale for the month. 15% off feather switchblade shears and blades for the month. These deals go through the end of the month at Jatai.net. Also, um... 25% off texturizing razors, 10% off texturizing blades. There's the three pack with the blade disposal case. The R type, the rapid blades with the 50% greater blade exposure. Those are 15% off as well. Uh, and that one comes with a two ounce blade glide. So there are some traditional razor blade specials going on for the month of April as well. You will see me here online with Jatai in a Facebook live again next month. Um, Subjects, if there's something you'd like to see or hear, throw it in the mailbag. That's fancy for comment on it here, uh, and we will see it, and we will be able to create some topics and things that directly answer the questions or meet the needs of some of all of you out there. Um, Ivanzoot.com is my website. Please go there. Uh, visit me there. Use the contact opportunity there to engage directly with questions and things that I can help you with. Lydia loves the book. Thank you, Lydia. I love that you love the book. Glad to see that. Anybody got anything else? I know there's about a 30-second delay here um, from when I say that till somebody comments and comes back with it. Anybody got any particular specific Q&A they want to ask or share or comment? Um, let's go. Take a big drink of that while your 27 seconds tick away before it's time. And I'm going to try to be patient for the full 30 seconds. It's hard for me to be patient. I'm not good at patient. But I'll try. Thank you, Yolanda. I appreciate that. 
All right, we're going to let the last few seconds tick away here. We're going to wish everybody, uh, we got an Easter holiday weekend coming up this weekend. Enjoy that. Uh, if that is your holiday, if not, enjoy Passover. If that is not your holiday, just enjoy the weekend. Have a great one. Um, I, next week, will be in uh, Florida. I'm down in Fort Lauderdale, and we just held a beard contest via Facebook. Great success. Beard content. You know what? Uh, comment on that a little bit here for those that will not only be with us, but but see this on replay if you can. Um, do a little typing. Tell us a little bit about what you did, how you did it, and how it worked for you. I'm thrilled that you had something work out well on Facebook and it was a success. But uh, part of the whole community here is sharing. So share a little bit about what you did and how you did it. Would love to uh, would love to hear about that. I think others will benefit from that as well. Um, Florida coming up next week and the following week, Atlanta, Georgia, the Atlanta Barber uh, Conference. That's going to be up north in Cobb County. Um, I know there's still tickets available for that one. I will be presenting my $100,000 haircutter class uh, and have some great things going on there as well. So thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for tuning in and joining us here at Jatai. Remember, J-A-T-A-I.net on the web is the website to visit. Appreciate y'all. Have a great evening. Thanks. Bye-bye.